Right, Mr. Palmer here doing the second video on CPU performance. So this one's about words and bus width. Okay, so the big question basically is how does word size affect the ability of the CPU to perform tasks? Now, remember the purpose of a CPU is to fetch, decode, and execute instructions. What does fetch entail? We need to get data from some form of memory address, data, or instruction. A binary is going to zip down the bus. Okay, and then in order to execute instructions, again, we need data. Okay. Um, so we've got the CPU on one side which wants to fetch decode execute we've got the RAM on the other side which contains the, the programs and the data that are currently in use so how do the requests get to the RAM and the data get back to the CPU basically we have two buses that we're concerned about in this particular video okay the address bus and the data bus so the, remember the CPU will send the address that it's interested in down the address bus to the RAM okay and then the CPU the RAM will return whatever value is stored in that location back to the CPU you can see in this video my address bus has got three lines okay each uh, so that and that's basically all a bus is it's a collection of lines which are the, the wires okay between one component and the other component each wire can carry only one signal on or off and that's why uh, that that address bus for example we can say is three bits wide because it's carrying three bits zero zero one so, uh, like uh, likewise the data bus is two bits wide um, and because it's got two lines in it all right so if I think about that address bus it's got three lines a bus width of three bits therefore I've only got two to the three permutations range of values of zero to seven basically what I'm saying is I can only address up to eight memory locations so if each um, location carry had like a byte in it I can only actually address eight bytes of memory okay um, if I increase the width of the address bus well obviously I'll be able to address a, a wider I have a wider range of possible addresses and I can address more memory so what I want you to do is I want you to hit pause and I want you to do the same calculation for 16 bit and 32 bits see if you get the same result as me in a minute and figure out what, what you might actually be able to send if you had those width of address buses okay so um, I'm assuming you've pressed play again and with a 16-bit address bus I had 2 to the 16 which is 65,536 possible addresses so um, I'm going to divide by 1024 uh, to and assuming that each mailbox contains one byte that basically means that I've got 64k of RAM that I can address okay uh, the same thing with 32-bit bus 2 to the 32 gives me 4 billion 294 million blah 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 okay and if I divide by 1024 uh, to get the, the in kilobytes and then I got 1024 again to get megabytes and 1024 again dividing that gives me four gigabytes of RAM assuming each mailbox is storing a byte of data okay so uh, what about the data bus basically the same thing applies all right uh, the wider bus equals more permutations so in the previous example I had two lines two to the two is four okay zero one two three they're the, all, they're the only values that I can transmit. That's a bit crap because that basically means that uh, I can't really transmit large values down the bus. If I had a 16-bit address bus, okay, I'd be able to transfer two bytes at once. So what can you actually transfer in two bytes? If you think about it, two ASCII characters or a single Unicode character. Okay, that's not a lot. So if we try and relate this now to machine code and assembler all right remember if you have an instruction and we break it down into the opcode and the operand okay uh, that whole thing needs to be transferred down the data bus okay between the cpu to the um to the uh, so from the ram down to the cpu so if i had a 16-bit bus i'd be able to transfer a 16-bit binary string containing opcode number bit or the addressing mode uh, and the operand down to the cpu okay that means if I had six bits for the opcode I'd only be able to transfer 64 possible instructions and if I kept a byte okay then basically I'd only be able to transmit a maximum value of 255 or if I was transferring characters again thinking about the previous example that's one ASCII character at a time potentially okay not a lot so 16 bits as you can see is not particularly useful that's why uh, you know that um, uh, up till recent we were using 32-bit CPUs and then basically nowadays we're all using 64-bit CPUs um, so the Intel Core i7 uses 46 bits to address the memory okay so um, it's got a 64-bit bus 
take out two bits. Um, uh, so you've got 46 bit for the memory, two bits for um, the uh, um, addressing mode, and then the rest of it is for the instruction opcode. Okay, so with 46 bits to address memory, basically you should be able to work out um, how much memory um, uh, an Intel Core i7 would be able to address. It's quite a large amount. All right, so um, you've basically been able to see how increasing the word size in this video, so in this video, increasing the word size of the address bus means that the CPU is able to address a larger amount of memory um, and work with that memory. And by having um, a, a larger word size in the data bus, you can transfer larger strings of data to the CPU, okay? And that's it.